Hey guys, it's Brent with Likens Motorsports. For this uh, episode of the channel, we're going to talk about something that I don't talk about very much, uh, Pontiac engines. So I am predominantly a Ford engine builder, and I specialize in Windsors, Cleveland's, FE's, and uh, big block Fords, and that's pretty much 99% of, of my business. Um, every once in a while I get to do something a little bit different and um, I've, I've been able to dabble in in the Chevrolet stuff uh, I think I've probably built I don't know six or seven Chevrolet engines over the course of the last uh, 20 years or so I did a straight six for a triumph for a customer so I do get to, uh, you know, try different things and, and get outside of my uh, comfort zone every once in a while. Um, so including in that statement is uh, Pontiac engines. So I have built three Pontiac engines, a whopping three, over the last couple of, of almost two decades. Uh, one was a uh, a 406 uh, dyno mule that I built for myself, and then a 434 cubic inch Pontiac, which is what you see here, and then I did another 400 short block for a customer. So, uh, not that much experience, but I'll tell you that I really, really do like the engines and just the way that they are designed and they kind of have some Ford-esque uh, qualities to them cam thrust plates uh, the, the front cylinder is on the passenger side uh, distributor turns counterclockwise like a Ford so there's there's a couple of similarities there that uh, and, and if I remember correctly um, the FE and the Pontiac share the same bore spacing. I, I could be wrong about that, but um, I think it's almost possible to bolt an FE head onto a Pontiac block. You correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, for some reason that's sticking in the back of my head. So for this episode, we're going to go over um, a couple of the Pontiac engines that I've done and also the future of uh, a dyno mule that I started a couple years ago and never really uh, got traction on it. So the first uh, Pontiac that I built um, was a dyno mule for myself and we started off with this 400 block that you see here and really really nice uh, engine block. Um, as with everything that we do we usually throw them in the oven and uh, blast them as well to get them looking like um, brand new out of the out of the mold bored and honed with torque plates um, line honed square deck the whole nine yards so uh, ARP makes a nice uh, main stud kit for them and if you see on the rear cap there the 9 16 fasteners that are used on the rear main cap. I'm not really sure why Pontiac did that. The others are half inch, but uh, when you get to those rear studs, you really got to get your big boy pants on to torque those things down. So we did this engine, and I just used um, a factory 400 crank um, and some ported Edelbrock heads. So we did a solid roller camshaft, ported Edelbrock heads, a Victor. Uh, Pontiac intake and um, I'll show you some other pictures here uh, custom race tech dome pistons so this engine um, on the dyno at the very first lick made 600 horsepower and a lot of potential left in that engine but on that very first pull we cracked a rod journal so it started losing oil pressure and then uh, actually uh, knocked a couple of bearings out uh, during that first pull. So a lot of potential, 600 horsepower, 
but that's where that's that's where it ended. So when you have something like that happen, it kind of knocks the wind out of your sails, and uh, I kind of brought it home. Um, I had the gumption to tear it apart to see exactly what happened. Magged the crank, found out that it had a crack rod journal, and then just kind of uh, shelve the parts after that. So around that same time uh, I was a member of some Pontiac forums um, which I <laughs> eventually got kicked off of of the performance years forum because um, I just couldn't um, agree with some of the things that one of the the main forum members were, were saying so um, I don't know it's a unique crowd on there that's all I'll say but uh, during that time one of the the other four members there contacted me about a build and um, I had sold uh, the ported Edelbrock heads and the cam and the intake but um, a member asked me if I would build a 434 Pontiac for for his car so I actually used that same block over again and he wanted billet main caps so we had the block fitted with those billet splayed main caps really stout there we did a scat 4340 4-inch stroke crankshaft so we ended up with um, like a 4155 bore or something like that and a 4-inch stroke so 434 cubic inches um, can't remember the rods I, I was trying to find some other pictures but um, there's there's the rods probably used race tech pistons on this one so that's the bottom end the the top end was actually a set of Kaufman heads which are just flat out awesome cylinder heads uh, I will um, those heads in the Pontiac world are amazing and I'll, t I'll explain why here in a second but uh, we use some Kaufman heads um, a custom hydraulic roller and get this guys 229 degrees at 50,000 duration single pattern cam because the exhaust side on the Kaufman heads is so good uh, around 600 lift and um, you'll get to see the dyno results here in a second after you listen to the pull but um, you'll be surprised at how much horsepower this this engine made um, Kaufman heads a performer RPM intake which took a little bit of finagling because uh, the Kaufman heads have uh, the higher ports which pushed the intake up a little bit um, Aluminum water pump, power bond balancer, uh, Moroso valve covers, and a Holly carburetor. So uh, around 10, 10 and a half to 1 compression, smallish cam, 434 cubic inches, uh, Kaufman cylinder heads, MSD distributor. Just some, some big boy horsepower. So we'll show you a picture here of the engine on the dyno Mylodon oil pan down there you can see that's the picture of the engine when we were getting ready to ship that thing out and just built a crate set it on there there's a a shot of those Kaufman cylinder heads and uh, looks like an all-star cradle for a Pontiac which has some very funky engine mount bolt holes to hold um, to hold the engine mounts to the block use some ARP head studs as you can see there and a fuel pump block off plate because we were expecting the, the engine to make some pretty good horsepower and it did there's a shot on the dyno and I'll let you hear it run here
All right, so you could hear how um, it, not very radical engine at all. You can hear it idle at the end there, just kind of a, a chop chop idle. Uh, fairly mild engine. So again, 434 cubic inches, 229 at 50, um, around 600 lift on that cam. So small cam. That engine made 600 horsepower. Um, it absolutely blew my mind. Those heads do so well. So 600 horsepower with a dual plane intake and a very mild hydraulic roller cam. So that's been one of my favorite Pontiac engines, and um, uh, it, it just did extremely well. So we did, as you can see there, we drove the water pump electrically, so that would uh, help us by 13, 14 horsepower. But still, even if you, um, you know, call this a 585 horsepower engine, that's very stout at, at just 6,000 RPM. So... Um, I'm, I'm a pretty big Pontiac fan and, um, we'll, uh, we'll use that as a segue into, um, the next part of the video. So this is our Pontiac 350. Um, I think we called it Pontiac Junk. That was its nickname, um, for the channel. So I bought that engine core. Um, it came out of a 1970 Tempest and I uh, bought it as a running complete engine but uh, got it home up on the engine stand and the thing was locked up tighter in Fort Knox so started taking it apart um, found all kinds of water and rust inside of it to the point where uh, rings were essentially rusted to the cylinders so no go on that one ended up getting my money back or a huge chunk of my money back because it was supposed to have been a running core, which is good. Um, and then proceeded to tear it apart. And you can watch um, the video on my YouTube channel if you want to go back and uh, look back through all of that and kind of freshen your mind on what's going on with the, with the build. Had some number 11 cylinder heads. I think that was a number 11. Um, they match up for the year and for the car, so makes sense. But um, that's where we are on on this project. So the uh, the block and the heads are at the machinist's shop, and uh, those will be done here in a few weeks, and then we can move on to other parts and portions of the build. So. The, the goal is uh, to keep it small displacement, so you guys know how I like the underdog engines and the high RPM engines, so that'll be um, kind of a foretaste of, of what it'll be. Um, any, anybody can make big horsepower with a large engine and a big cylinder head. Uh, it takes a lot of knowledge and experience to make big power with a small engine and uh, factory pieces so I always learn when I do that sort of thing so that's one of the reasons why I do it uh, I plan to keep it a hydraulic roller uh, just to prove some guys wrong and um, so maybe a little bit of uh, ego involved in that so stay tuned and uh, stay tuned for the progress on on that engine it maybe we can get some Pontiac fans uh, on the channel. Hope you guys are having a great week and now uh, the start of a weekend. Uh, try to stay out of the heat. It's uh, miserable here in Kentucky. Uh, very humid, very hot, but uh, good excuse to get out in the shop and, and work on some engines. Um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already as uh, you don't want to miss out on any Ford and Pontiac stuff. Uh, make sure you hit our Teespring link and uh, check out the sh shirts and the other swag that we have for sale there. Hope you guys are having a good week and I will see you soon.